Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we shall continue to review the 10th edition Imperial Guard data sheets. This time, we shall be looking at what is quite possibly the most famous and iconic artillery piece in the entire of Warhammer 40k. It's the Basilisk. With its imposing and intimidating Earth Shaker Cannon reaching into the heavens, it is easy to say that the Basilisk is one of the most recognizable units for the Guard, synonymous with their overwhelming firepower. I myself own a pair of Basilisks, and as a result, I am really excited to see what Games Workshop has given this unit for the new edition of 40k. So without further ado, let's shatter their sky, main gun range, and dive right into today's episode. As is tradition in this series, we shall start off with a brief overview of what the hell a basilisk actually is. This is for the players who may be new to the guard faction or even to 40k as a whole. In the lore, the Basilisk is the premier artillery piece of the guard. The go-to solution for when you need to sling high explosives in the direction of the enemy. Despite the fact that the Imperium has access to some incredible weapons, especially those from the Dark Age of Technology, the Imperial Guard has found time and time again that the easiest solution to any of their battlefield problems is to shell them into oblivion. And this is the job the Basilisk does incredibly well. Armed with the powerful yet accurate Earthshaker cannon, the Basilisk has been successful in nearly all kinds of battlefield role. Do you have a bunch of artillery struggling to get across no man's land? Well, the creeping barrage from a battery of Basilisk will provide them enough cover to get into the enemy trenches. As the opposing force bunker down inside their fortifications, no worries, the Basilisk will bring them crumbling down around them. Is one of your flanks beginning to collapse under the onslaught of a heretic assault? Fear not, the Basilisk will stop them dead in their tracks. The Basilisk's success in all of these battlefield scenarios and more has given rise to an old saying in the guard. Infantry wins firefights, tanks win battles, but artillery wins wars. And what's brilliant is the Basilisk is able to effectively translate its lore into tabletop results, creating a unit which is both powerful and reliable in your games. Sure, like any unit, it's had its ups and downs. In fact, in its last iteration in the 9th edition book, it wasn't actually very good at all. There were ways you could just about make it work, but it certainly wasn't the go-to. However, all of that is about to change. Because in 10th edition, the Basilisk is looking real spicy. And let's get into that now by going over the Basilisk main stat line. It has a movement value of 10, toughness 9, 3 plus save, 11 wounds, leadership 7 plus, and an objective control of 3. This is pretty much the standard issue stat line for a medium vehicle in addition. We've seen something similar on the Space Marine Rhino. What's more surprising is when you compare the Basilisk to some of the other vehicles that have been previewed for the Guard. For example, the Torox is only Toughness 8. I am pleasantly surprised that GW made the Basilisk tougher than the Torox. Toughness of 9 is quite a big deal. One of the more common weapons we're going to encounter in 10th edition is autocannons and their equivalent. Now, also cannons have had a bit of a glow up in 10th. They've gone up to strength 9, and they've also gone up to damage 3. By being toughness 9, in comparison to the Torox's toughness 8, the Basilisk will have a decent level of resiliency against this common anti-vehicle weapon. Now, that doesn't suddenly mean you want to be pressing the Basilisk into frontline roles. It's not an assault gun. Leave the frontal attacks to the Lehman Rust, which is even more durable than this thing. If the Basilisk is getting shot at by direct fire weapons, something has probably gone a bit wrong. And instead, you should be thinking about having this near the back of your lines, behind some cover, behind some line of sight blocking stuff, letting it fire its shells indirectly. But by having a good toughness, by having a decent amount of wounds, by having a good save, 
it makes the basilisk more resilient to counter battery fire. For example, the Space Marine Whirlwind and Tyranid Biovore, both classic artillery units for their respective factions, are only going to wound the Basilisk on a 5 plus. But let's be real with each other here for a moment. We're not taking the Basilisk for its defensive start line. We're interested in the big dick cannon sticking out of the front of it, the Earth Shaker. And my, 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 how the old girl has changed. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I think the Basilisk just proves that saying completely false. Yes, we still have indirect fire, and yes, it's still got the bonkers 240 inch range. But after that, things start evolving. We've got the new Blast special rule, which means that for every five models in the enemy unit, we get plus one shot. We also have the new Heavy rule. This means that if the Basilisk stays still, it will get plus one to hit. It has D6 plus three attacks, making it very reliable. And it has a ballistic skill of four plus. Now, of course, we fire the Basilisk indirectly. We will hit on a five plus, but thanks to it being heavy, we're gonna hit back on a four plus. So it's got the tools it needs to be an effective indirect fire weapon. Unlike in ninth edition, where Basilisks would often find themselves hitting on sixes basically being unusable. Where the biggest changes have occurred though is in the strength. It's now only strength eight. It was strength 10. If we were going by normal 10th edition rules, this thing should have translated from strength 10 over to strength 14 in 10th edition, but it hasn't. It's only strength eight. It's actually taken a downgrade in an edition where many units have only had their toughness go up. So surely that's a big nerf, right? Well, not quite. It's also AP minus two and it's also damage two. Essentially, the Basilisk has gone from being a take all comers, a jack of all trades, master of non artillery piece, to being a bit more specialized. It is meant to go after medium and heavy infantry dug into cover. With that strength eight, it means that any light infantry and any medium infantry anything up to a space marine intercessor something with two wounds and toughness of four is going to get wounded on twos and with the ap minus two it means that even if they get the benefit of cover it doesn't matter you've got enough ap to smash through that and still degrade your opponent's save and damage two of course means that you will be you insta jib any kind of medium infantry game What's great is also Blast makes you effective against light infantry. Sure, you only have D6 plus three attacks at your base level, but the moment you start shooting this at a 10 man squad or a 20 man squad, I'm thinking some of those new Termagant Tyranid Broods, this thing starts going up to D6 plus five or maybe even D6 plus seven if you're shooting at a particularly full horde unit. On top of this, the Basilisk can put work in against elite heavy infantry as well. I don't care if your new Space Marine Terminators are Toughness 5. I don't care if your Alaris Terminators are Toughness 7. Either way, I'm wounding you on 3s and I have enough AP to kick you down to your invulnerable save if I catch you out in the open. It can even threaten light vehicles as well. Skimmers such as the Dark Elder Venom and opposing Imperial Guard Scout Sentinels will be wounded on threes. And even vehicles such as the Torox, which is Toughness 8, will be wounded on fours. Unfortunately, the Basilisk can no longer reliably threaten medium and heavy tanks. Anything with toughness nine or above, it's gonna be wounding them on fives. And considering that you won't get any extra shots from the blast rule against those targets, you're probably gonna find your Basilisk struggles. And if you want any more evidence that GW is pushing the Basilisk as an anti-infantry weapon, then look no further than its new Earthshaker Rounds ability. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, if one or more of those attacks made with its Earthshaker cannon scored a hit against an enemy infantry unit, until the end of your opponent's next turn, that unit is shaken. While a unit is shaken, subtract two from its move characteristic and subtract two from advance and charge rolls made for it. I'm not gonna lie to you, 
against the right target, this is a wildly powerful ability, even potentially broken against some armies. This is because games of Warhammer 40k are often won and lost in the movement phase, and anything you can do to disrupt your opponent's maneuverability is a big game changer. What's completely crazy about Earthshaker rounds is its ability is a double doozy, because not only does it subtract two from the movement characteristic, so let's say you've got a Space Marine that's going to move six inches, now it only moves four, but in addition, it subtracts two from advance and charge rolls. This starts getting really crazy because you have the ability to make slow moving units such as Death Guard move one inch a turn. Let me explain, and I'm sorry to do this to all of my smelly Death Guard boys, but it's gotta be done, all right? Death Guard units have a movement value of four inches. If they are hit by the Earthshaker rounds, then their four inch move characteristic becomes a two inch move characteristic. Naturally, the Death Guard player is then going to want to make up some of that lost movement. So he goes to roll an advance. If he does this, the second part of Earthshaker rounds kicks in. Because not only do you subtract from the move characteristic, you subtract from the advance roll as well. If your opponent then rolls a one on his advance, he minuses two from that roll. And it doesn't say anywhere that the dice isn't reduced to a minimum of zero or a minimum of one. It just says you subtract two from the advance roll. This means that your advance roll, which would have given you an extra inch of movement, you take two away from that and that becomes an extra negative inch of movement. Therefore, a Death Guard player who has a movement value of four rolls an advance roll of one has a total move of five actually has four reduced from that total and it becomes a one inch move essentially you just pin them in place and what's crazy is this kind of applies to many other units as well you've got that space marine unit that had a six inch move well goes down to a four he tries to advance he rolls a one. Oh, that's actually another negative two but now he's down to a three inch inch move now i completely appreciate that i could be wrong in my interpretation of this rule or that gw is going to come out with a day one faq to fix it let's split the difference even if you can't reduce the advance roll below a zero fair enough it still means that if your opponent goes to advance with a unit that's been hit by an earth shake around if they roll a one or a two they just don't advance and they essentially give up their shooting for no advantage. Even if they roll a three, they're only going an extra inch. But wait, there's more, because of course this also works with charge rolls. So if your opponent is literally an inch away, he's just outside of engagement range from one of your units, and you hit that unit with an Earthshake around, if your opponent then proceeds to roll Snake Eyes on his charge, he doesn't move. And there's loads of other knock-on effects this has. Your opponent might have an easy 5-inch charge. Suddenly, it's become a risky 50-50. Now he has to choose whether to take the risk and fail, leaving his unit exposed, or spend some of his precious CP on stratagems to make the charge more reliable, or simply, if he does fail it, on a CP reroll to try and get in again. Whatever happens, the Earthshaker rounds are allowing you to shape the battlefield. Now, all of this is sounding amazing, and it is, but so far we've just viewed the Basilisk with our blinkers on. We've looked at it in isolation. Where things start jetting off to the moon, full diamond hands, is when we start viewing the Basilisk in the wider context, with other units that it can combine with. Firstly, the Basilisk is a great support unit for a Death Strike. One of the big problems with the Death Strike is when you place its marker down, you have to wait a turn before you can let off the missile. This gives your opponent a chance to move away. But if you start pinning them down with Earthshaker rounds, they might not be able to get out of that generous 6 inch radius of the Death Strike's explosion. I know some people will be thinking, but Mordian, taking a Basilisk just to support a Death Strike seems like a bit of a waste of time. Are you not just throwing good money after bad in that situation? 
Well, the thing is that the Basilisk has its own firepower that is not inconsiderable. And that firepower leads us well into our second example, which is the Basilisk pairs ridiculously well with the Scout Sentinel. You see, Sentinels have a fantastic new ability called Daring Recon. It allows you to pick an enemy unit visible and within 18 inches of Sentinel. When you then fire any other units in your army, it doesn't matter where they are on the board, the Sentinel and the Basilisk could be 70 inches away from each other, it doesn't matter. Wherever these other units are on the board, when they go to shoot at the unit that has been marked, that's been painted by the Sentinel, they get reroll ones to hit. But on top of this, they also get to ignore the to hit penalty if they're firing indirectly. This means that your Basilisk, which was just hitting on a straight four plus, is now hitting on a three plus with reroll ones. It's hitting on a three plus because it has a ballistic skill of four plus basic and heavy gives it plus one to hit if it stays still. But things just get even more bonkers when you realize that heavy and take aim the imperial guard order stack take aim increases your unit's ballistic skill by one this means essentially when you're looking at your data sheet for the basilisk and you see bs4 plus if you tell your basilisk to take aim using someone like a tank commander or the lord solar that BS4 plus gets crossed out in crayon and for that turn becomes a three plus. But heavy is a plus one to hit modifier. That's physically altering the roll of the dice. If you get a three to hit, it changes it to a two to hit. So these two different mechanics totally stack, which means if you have a basilisk, which has been told to take aim and is being supported by a sentinel with Daring Recon, the end result is your Basilisk is hitting the enemy on a 2 plus re-rolling ones, giving it an almost 100% hit rate. If that doesn't give you your own trouser-based Earthshaker cannon, then I don't know what will. And in my opinion, this is a huge step in the Basilisk evolution. Traditionally, it was always limited to going after those little five-man squads that were sound objectives, and over the course of several turns, it might chip away at them, disrupting your opponent's plans. No more. Now it can do that job way more effectively. But on top of that, if you combine enough Bowser together, two, maybe even three of them, and support them appropriately with orders and sentinels, they're no longer just supplementary firepower. They're no longer just harassing firepower. They are now primary damage dealers in your army. But all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Are you a big fan of the new Basilisk? Are there any drawbacks or Achilles heels that you think this unit may have? If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. And if you found this whole thing particularly fun or informative, please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only are you helping us create more videos here on the Morning Glory channel, but you will also unlock a whole bunch of perks for yourself, including access to the Morning Glory Discord server, an online community with over 1,500 active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord, and we've got channels for discussing army list tactics, new 10th edition stuff, and of course, it's got a pretty spicy meme section as well. And I just want to take a moment, say a big thank you to all of our latest members. So thank you to Joe M, MP Bros 20, Robbie Mintz, Hand of Banner, Sam Richardson, Matthew Manti, Dr. Gun Go Pew Pew, Christopher Jackson, Noswell X, Go EA, E Lee, Man Man, Millen Cora, James Hewitt, C. Wolanski, and John. I also want to shout out the latest Patreons as well. So a big thank you to Jeffrey Hill, Digit, Heartsick Ruben, DA Wear 7, Ewan Furs, Jesse Tucker, Jonathan Vega, Franz Calamari, Michael Straub, Legendary Hot Dog, Capusa, and Shigoy Gold Queen. And last but certainly not least, I want to take the time 
to say a special thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the Call of Duty. So a massive thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, Mark Panconi, Ross Miller, Sawfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Thank you guys, your incredible and generous support makes a huge difference and is a big part of how I'm able to do more doing time. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.